From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond, love your London, have a banana. In today's instalment of Love Your London, we put our faith into our own capabilities. But first, we have a little more of Churchfield Road to show you. This is uh, run or, uh, by an Australian chap called Mr Tim English, so he's not breaking any advertising standards there. Sadly, he's, um, uh, by the time you watch this video, this place will have gone, it's changing. On the positive side though, what happens in Churchfield is that um, these independent shops tend to be replaced by other independent shops rather than by chains. So uh, there's a Polish fishing tackle shop that used to be just up there on the left, about uh, five, six doors down. That's now a cake shop. So it does happen. Very sad that these, these shops close down, but still, they're being replaced by similar sort of independent shops. I mean, this is another case in point. Just next door to the English butcher, uh, we have this shop here called Basil and Tom's. As you can see, a very old looking sign. Um, however, it's not actually that old. This shop is only a year old or so. Um, before, it used to be called Shotgun Studios. And it was had like, it was like a, it's a specialised in surreal art. I remember there used to be here in this window, um, a green um, alien a mannequin. It was fantastic. Um, so I don't actually know wh why the reasons why Shotgun Studios over there closed or, um, or, or the English butchers, that's very personal. I'm sure it's, um, I mean they had accountants right next door as you can see. We have Data Count here and we have Clark & Co here. So two accountants side by side next to Basil & Tom's and the English butcher. Now, um, funny thing is, this building up here is where uh, none other than the Lionel Bart lived until he died in 1999. Lionel Bart of course wrote the musical Oliver, wrote all the songs um, and this is where he lived. So uh, Mr, let me just see, Mr Accountant can I have some more please? Can I have some more? Okay so we're right next to Acton Central Station, we're going to take a look at that uh, in a second. First of all, uh, I'm going to take you up to number 18 Goldsmith Road, which is just here. Now, as mentioned Lionel Bart just now, he also wrote a song called Easy Going Me for a certain Mr. Adam Face. Now, Mr. Adam Face um, is, was one of the first teenage heartthrobs in this country. He was born just over there. We'll show you where he was born in a moment. But after a bomb wrecked his house, um, he, his whole family, when he was a little baby, moved just down there, number 18. Let's check it out. Okay, so we're outside number 18, Goldsmiths. Um, this is the childhood home of a certain Mr. Terry Neelams. Terry Neelam, of course, being uh, the, bir the uh, birth name of Adam Faith. This is where he moved with his mum, screaming as a baby. His house was flattened by a bomb, which we're just going to look at the original site of his house in a few moments, the other side of the train tracks. Of course, when he was 17, he changed his name and became a huge heartthrob. We're we going inside the house. This is fantastic. Um, the, you want me to try to take my shoes off? No, don't worry. Oh. Hello. <laughs> so this used to be a family, a single, a single house, you believe? It would have been, yeah. So he probably, they lived here. Yes, I mean, hello Sorry. there. <laughs> right, come back. Hello. She was locked in. Don't worry, she won't touch you. Go on, right in. Go on. In. in. This is fantastic. So this is where Adam Faith used to live when he was a child. We have no idea which was his bedroom. Hello, thank you so much for letting me in, especially, no, I'll, I'll wear a mask. I'm, yeah, if you want to film yourself, you're to sit down there. No, no, there. it's fantastic. So this will be appearing uh, probably in, in, in August on, oh, online. Yeah. Um, and you happy for this to appear? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> here's, here's the view. Yeah, you should get a blue plaque. In fact, if you speak to the heritage people who look after that, because they put a blue plaque where he was born. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so this deserves a blue plaque, definitely. Yeah, no. You just moved in? No, no, we've been here four years. Ah, oh, right. Six, six now. Still doing it up, yeah. yeah. It was Charles Dance's parents lived up uh, Goldsmith Avenue, mm. didn't they? At the top, I think. Charles Dance? Mm. Yeah. Wow. The actor, yeah, his Does everyone lives here? My family used to live around here a long, long time ago. That's yeah. why I've got a special interest in the area. Yeah. Great. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And, and, and thank you for letting me inside. Okay. Great. So you've heard of, uh, you, you, you read about the, our channel? I 
saw you, I think you must have put the hashtag of actors. I saw you post up and you said, I'll say hello if you see me. Yes, like that. that's right. And it was only when he said, oh, I played, I looked out, I went, oh, he was on Instagram, let me run outside. This is the third time today that someone's unrecognised oh, us. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, do do so. Do, uh, speak to the um, speak yeah, to right. the action. Oh, isn't that amazing? Um, some bee petting. Yeah, that's what I do. They like it. Well, they don't mind it. They they like the lavender, if not the padding. Yeah, lovely. Lovely little one. So there we are. We're, that was uh, that was fantastic. That was um, an unexpected surprise to be allowed into someone's private home and to see where Adam Face used to live. Now let's go in a moment, check see where he was born. First of all, a little bit about the station. Okay, so this is this sort of demonstrates the great community feel that there is in this area. Um, in loving memory of Michael Joseph Torpy. Um, a high de a degree of integrity always showed a selfless attitude when assisting others. His honesty, humanity, generosity and humour touched all of us. He was a member of the Acton Central family for 22 years. Um, now he wasn't, as I don't know if he was necessarily a great hero, um, but, what if, but he was obviously clearly loved. So much so that the station, Acton Central station, decided to put a plaque up for him. Just a lovely gesture. Um, now, what else can I tell you about the station? Uh, this was actually opened in 1853 and it was just called Acton. Um, and there's been a lot of Actons here, as I said, so it's understandable that they decided to change the name to Acton Central in 1925. Um, it's actually very lucky to be here at all because in 1963 this station was one of the ones that was supposedly going to be axed in that famous beaching report, uh, the Beaching Axe, uh, which was, um, which was uh, all about modernising the rail network, which was done by Robert Beeching. In fact, if you're a private eye reader or subscriber, you may remember that signal failure section uh, in the magazine by Mr. B. Ching. That's a, sort of like a, a tongue-in-cheek joke about, about Mr. Beeching. This wasn't axed, fortunately. This is now quite a busy station. I mean, this the uh, level crossing closes all the time. And... Um, there are plans to extend this overground from ha from Hounslow right up to past Neeston. Now, if this gets a go ahead, this station will be on, on that route, which means that that level crossing is going to get even busier than it is now. Um, it's not a 24-hour station. There's no toilets, um, not for disabled or not for anyone. Uh, but if you are disabled, you need to change platforms. You just have to. Is that there are ramps? You can easily come out, just go across the road, and then. Across. I mean, the station used to be in zone two, it's now in zone three. <sighs> yeah, these things happen. Probably quite annoying for people with uh, season tickets, they ended up having to pay a lot more if they were working in the centre, but there you go, these things happen. Okay, so um, this is where Adam Faith was born, Terry Neelums. Uh, Terry Nellums, uh, 1940 to 2003, singer and actor, born in a house on this site, destroyed by a V1 bomb in 1944. He was just three months old, and uh, what, uh, was he a fan of bread? No, no. I imagine this is um, this is obviously an offering that someone's well, like, left. I was wondering, is it like a shrine or something? I or guess, yeah. To leave it I guess he liked his bread. No, no, no. It's just, it's just, they're just leaving, leaving things for him. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so this is fantastic. Um, and we're going to go have a little look uh, inside uh, the park now because there's so much happening in there. And we've arranged a special treat. So, don't go away. Um, this is a, a pavilion that's been here since 1936. But obviously, you, you're, you're not as old as, uh, as that. <laughs> Tell, tell us a little bit about it. Um, so the golf course has been open here for about five years now and the pizzeria has only been open for about two or three years. Right. Um, we recently just reopened as well. Obviously we've been shut due to Corona. Yeah. Um, but we're now operating via a booking system so you can buy tickets online. Um, people can't just come in and walk in. Everything's just via booking just to make it as safe as possible for That's everyone fantastic. at the moment. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so they go on your website and they can yeah, do Yeah, they just there. go on our website and then select which golf course they want to come to and then they can just choose from there and book the tickets. And you're open until? Open from nine in the morning until eight in the evening, wow. every single day. That's fantastic. And, and and, and you and uh, all through the year or all through the year the uh, opening times do change depending on, on the kind daylight of, on the daylight but at the moment nine to eight fantastic thank you very much i don't think i went in let's let's try again keep it keep the camera rolling though It's 
I think it's just, they, 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 I think the hole's in the wrong place. I think it's in the wrong place. Right? Okay, ready? Ah! Oh, that was so close. Okay. I don't say what how many pars this one is. I imagine it's a par three at least. Ah. Oh. You see they shouldn't have a bump there. It's not even. It's not even. Here we go. Can't miss. Oh. So I need to make it flatter. Okay. Did you see that? Did you get that? I did get that. That was worth the price of admission. Well, I think that shot deserves an action replay. Oh, and didn't you hear the crowd's appreciation afterwards? No. Listen to this. <laughs> that wasn't appreciation. Listen to it again. <laughs> Still don't hear it. Oh, well, what was it then? Maybe they didn't like the fact that you were kissing the green in mid-pandemic. Oh, well, whatever. That's the best. That's the best. That's the best I've ever, ever. I mean, I, I, haven't, I haven't played golf very much, but that's probably the best I've ever done. Do you see that? What we'll do, we'll, 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 we'll just have that last final shot and then um, pretend it was a hole in one. Well, I may not be Rory McIlroy, but at least I'm honest. I kept all the shots in after all. This is the Acton Skate Park and it helps keeps, keep the young kids off the streets and, uh, and, uh, and they can then perform their, all their clever little routines uh, somewhere here where uh, they're not going to hurt anyone else apart from themselves. Ah, before I forget, a subscriber got in touch with us to let you know about all the great work that the Acton Play Projects and Leisure Services, or Apple for short, do. They've got something called the Art Block, and they're a charity that lends out equipment to children during the afternoons to use in the park on trust. This includes bicycles and skateboards, and the people at the centre even teach the kids how to skate. They're really patient and they don't charge a thing. Children and young people feel supported. You can get more information about them at apple-play.com. Thanks, Jen, for the tip. Um, now, over there, we can see an adventure playground. So if your children are a little bit too uh, precious for the park, um, they can go on there. Well, and these, this is locally sourced wood. You can't get more locally sourced than this. These, uh, the wood that's used here is actually from this park, I believe. Um, and uh, it fell down during a hurricane. Um, and so this, is, uh, this was reused. Fantastic um, initiative. And right over there, beyond East Acton Road, um, beyond the traffic, there's another part of the park. You've got things like the David Lloyd uh, sports sort of gym and, and, and open air swimming pool, indoor swimming pool as well. It's very exclusive. It used to be really exclusive. There's David Lloyd centres all over the country, but that's one of the, uh, one of the really posh ones. Um, be nice to maybe one day be invited to uh, attend one of those. Better tidy myself up. Uh, so if you're listening, Mr David Lloyd, uh, be great. We can have a go on one of your famous tennis courts. Uh, talking of tennis, there are tennis courts over, obviously over there. There's smaller tennis courts that are a lot more accessible uh, to book over there. Football pitches, everything. Uh, so again a great place and there's two more cricket clubs over there as well um, in the other part of the park so it's cricket everywhere cricket tennis you name it skating okay so we're at the south um, uh, side of Acton Park um, and this house here this beautiful house here 
It's actually called the Acacias. Um, there used to be a plaque here until very recently saying the Acacias. Um, uh, and uh, this is where Sean Connery uh, moved with his new wife, Diane Salento, um, in 1962, shortly after filming Dr. No, the very first uh, um, uh, James Bond film that he was in. He moved here. He, only did, he didn't live here very long, he, I think he lived here for about eight years. Um, he, he loved Acton, he was often seen around here. Unfortunately, he was burgled almost as soon as he moved in. Uh, they nicked 50 quid's worth of stuff from in there. Um, now, 50 quid obviously doesn't sound like an awful lot of money, but when you consider that he bought this house for £9,000, um, well, that's 180, 50 quid. So, basically, they stole 180th of this house in value. Um, anyway, I don't know who lives there now, but they removed the sign saying Acacias, which is a, a great shame. And maybe they don't even know that um, this is where one of our most loved um, role of actors, whatever, uh, used to live. Here we go, the Acacias. Sean Connery, you can just imagine him sort of like standing on the balcony up there behind the wisteria, looking out at the park. Fantastic. Rolling. Okay, so we are here on the Vale, which is to the south of Acton Park. Over there are Acton Vale Flats, uh, the, this whole area. Um, now, when Adam Faith made it, he bought his mum a uh, flat here, I believe. He bought his mum also uh, this little place here. Now, it wasn't the post office back then. It was a sweet shop and, and his mum called it Terry's. Terry's, obviously, his real name being Terry. Needham's. Um, so uh, this was a sweet shop, used to sell stationery as well, like it does, does today. Um, it was called Terry's, had a big red sign. Um, I do have to thank here um, Mr. Ron Burdell from the We Love Acton uh, Facebook group, uh, who um, pointed out to me exactly where I would find that. So thank you very much, Ron. Really helpful, because it sort of, it's a colophon to the whole, um, the whole Adam Faith description and connection to this area. In the next instalment of Love Your London, we discover the delights of Warple Way, we wonder why yet again we're on the losing team, and we get scared by some very creepy looking children. See you then. From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond, Love Your London, have a banana.